to the Anacortes City Council meeting of March 14th, 2022. Ms. Hunt, could you take the roll, please? Mr. Carter. Present. Mr. Young. Present. Mr. Walters. Ms. Cleela McGrath. Here. Ms. Moulton. Here. Ms. McDougall. Here. Ms. Hubick. Here. Thank you. And I see Mr. Walters is here. Here. All right. Thank you. Uh, would you please join me in the pledge? Okay, uh, first item announcements and committee reports. I just have uh, one from me, and hopefully it's going to be my last COVID report. As everybody probably knows by now, the governor has lifted the indoor uh, masking requirement on Saturday, and it's nice to see everybody's faces. Uh, and we're continuing to uh, see a dramatic drop in uh, cases and more importantly, hospitalizations. And I'll uh, quote from our Skagit County Health Officer, uh, Howard LeBrand, and uh, his quote is, we have herd immunity and we don't have the threat, a threat on the horizon. So that's, he's looking at uh, vaccination and uh, vaccination status and natural immunity. Uh, we welcome, I of course uh, welcome uh, citizens to make their own risk assessments about uh, whether they uh, want to wear masks. So that's all good. So that's all I have, and going on to our uh, 3B, oh, 3A, the Skagit Law and Justice Council did not meet. Uh, they moved that meeting out to April, I believe, Mr. Carter. And uh, so we're on to Finance Committee, 3B. Finance Committee report. Uh, Mayor Miller. Mr. McDougall. Finance Committee met uh, the other day, and Let's see, we covered a number of topics. Uh, one of the first ones was kind of a, a joint fiber finance committee discussion, um, and basically just making sure that uh, everybody's kind of aligned on the, the numbers and projections and timelines as well. So we, um, we discussed again the EDA grant timing and the fact that we have a, basically a large lag time while we have to wait for the federal um, procurement guidelines. And so um, because of the schedule, we'll go ahead and schedule the GWEMIS view construction to occur immediately after Skyline. Um, next item, we can I note here, notes here. <clears throat> I would discuss with the uh, fire chief um, a, a light rescue like brush engine, like a new truck. Essentially, there's an old 26-year-old truck with only 11,000 miles on it, and it's ERNR funded. And the proposal is to use those funds to get basically a, a truck that's a new truck that's more elevated. So to do stuff like up Mount Erie or on Guimas and other like, uh, you know, in a lot of our uh, wilder places. So existing truck can't get to a lot of those spots. So use that. Also, there would be some additional funds that could be used to acquire a UTV side by side, kind of like a four wheeler. And so that, that sounded good. And I think we'll see a proposal coming soon. Um, we also were dis discussed Fire Station 3 funding options. Um, a site survey, critical area studies, and cost estimate are kind of in the works. We expect them to be done kind of July timeframe. And the old cost estimates are going to be low. So the current es estimate <clears throat> could be as high as $600, square, $600 per square foot for construction. Um, and we assume for that probably a bond is needed. So more to come on that. Uh, another. Item we discussed was redistricting of the, the city's wards themselves, so from the 2020 census. And actually, it turns out that our districts line up like where it's like 99.5%, so basically no, no redistricting needed. So that concluded that discussion fairly easily. And that's what I have. Okay, uh, thanks. I think it's a 10% requirement in population change in order to move things around, so. I guess uh, Ward 1, 2, and 3 are still uh, all good. Uh, all right, on to Housing Affordability and Community Services Committee. Mayor Miller? Ms. Moulton. Hey, thank you. 
We met last Thursday, as usual, at 9 o'clock, and our guest presenter was David Jefferson from Digwa Leach Wellness Center, and he gave an excellent presentation about the population served, their services, their needs, and how they how they work with our community members, um, both tribal and non-tribal. One of the interesting facts that he shared is that 70% of their clients are non-tribal members. So that was very interesting. Um, so they serve everyone that they can that needs help. And not only do they do um, medication-assisted treatment for substance use disorders, they also do primary care providing now. They do dental they help people get IDs and they provide transportation and a whole host of services. So we were really glad to learn about that. And we also had great attendance as we have been um, from community members and other providers from other organizations. So it was another great meeting um, in our whole learning process of how we can improve services for our community. Thanks. Thank you. All right, we're on to item 3D, planning committee. Mayor Miller. Mr. Walters. The planning committee met right before this meeting, uh, all three of us, uh, Mr. Miesmer and uh, Ms. Grage. <clears throat> we provided some feedback on the planning department website. Uh, we just previously to the meeting, starting at 4.30, uh, a couple of us attended the Bellingham for Everyone uh, presentation from the Whatcom Housing Alliance, uh, which is going to be recorded. And it had a lot of good information uh, debunking some of the um, common refrains about homelessness uh, with actual data. So we'll get a copy of that and we'll get it put on our, probably our Housing Affordability and Community Services website. Um, we talked about parklets and we talked about uh, drafting regulations for parklets. Um, we developed a little bit of an outline and we'll, we'll get into that maybe a little further at a, a subsequent meeting and then bring it to council uh, for feedback on the outline. Uh, but this is not a development regulation, so it would go into Title 12. It would be adopted by council um, with, without the need for uh, land use review. <clears throat> and it could make the parklets um, permanent. It could also provide a process for removal of parklets uh, with appropriate due process and appeal provisions. Um, Couple of updates on the legislative processes that the planning department has going. The 2021 comprehensive plan amendments are going on Wednesday to the planning commission for an introductory meeting. The critical areas ordinance updates that we agreed to in our settlement agreement are out for public comment and they'll be showing up to the planning commission soon. And then also the, the updates to our shoreline master program. Um, staff are working on incorporating some changes to the document based on uh, some comments that we received and then that'll be moving forward. And that, that's a substantial update, as you might all remember, because it's gonna actually extract the um, development regulation portion of the plan and put those into our code, which hasn't been done before. Make it a lot more user-friendly. I think that's it. Okay, thank you very much. All right, we're on to item 3E, Skagit Valley Tulip Festival. And we have Cindy Verge, uh, Executive Director of Skagit Valley Tulip Festival. Ms. Verge, you're on. Yeah, yeah, green light. There we go. All yeah. right, I'll get, I'll get close. Yeah, pretty to close the to the mic, yeah. and you can bend it and get it. Okay. There. Um, I am so happy to be here playing with the mic tonight and be here in person. Uh, there was nothing sadder than two years ago when the Tulip Festival was canceled. We were so excited last year when we got to do a little bit. And this year, we're almost all the way back. It is just wonderful. Um, and we have um, a big slate of events and activities. Not quite everything came back. For instance, the quilt walk didn't come back to Anacortes because the quilters, there were, it was just too many doubts. Um, we also, uh, PACCAR isn't having their open house this year because they had to make that decision in December. <laughs> and it just couldn't happen. So there, there are some things that just simply, there were too many unknowns and, and too many things that had to get there. But we have our salmon barbecue. That's going to start on April 2nd 
and be on Friday, Saturday, and Sundays through the end of the month. We have our tulip parade on the second Saturday in April. We have the street fair back in Mount Vernon, and we have Woodfest back in Cedar Woolley. Plus, we have three different art shows going on during the festival, and we've even got our petting zoo back. So it's really exciting to have all of these things going on, and we're ready to welcome people. I think it's going to be a banner year. Uh, I've been putting up posts, and the daffodil post that I put up last week in four hours, and it didn't have a daffodil in full bloom in that picture, garnered over 14,000 people. And that's pretty cool that people are that excited. And I also want to take the time to thank all of you for your support of the Tulip Festival. You help us publish this brochure. It's 180,000 copies worth. 85,000 of those go out via certified folder service throughout um, Western Washington and into Canada. And the rest are distributed local, locally. We mail a lot out to AAA, to senior housing, people that are doing uh, excursions to the Tulip Festival, to park centers um, all across the state of Washington. And then um, normally we get about 65,000 that are downloaded from our website. So it has a really great reach and a lot of people really use that. And in the middle is the map and it tells you where everything is on there. And then I have one more thing. And that is the 2022 poster. And it is just delightful. It, it makes you smile. Our artist this year is Jack Gunter. And Jack told me when we did an interview with him, um, for the poster unveiling. And he said he wanted to get something that was joyful. And that was why he chose to have, you see the two little girls twirling in the poster? And if any of you have had young little girls, I swear every single one of them twirls at some point between five and eight years old, they just twirl. And I just thought that was a delightful uh, way to capture the feeling of the Tulip Festival. And his statement that he wanted something joyful has kind of given us an unofficial slogan for the year, and that is, joy is blooming. Because I think it feels like that to all of us, that COVID's over, it's time to move on, it's time to have some fun things. And the Tulip Festival, with all the emphasis on outdoors still, is a wonderful way to give us a kickoff and get it started. And so with this, I'd like to present this to the city. Well, lots of uh, joyful colors in that uh, painting, and thank you very much. Uh, Council, yeah. any? Mr. Yeah. Young. No, I just wanted, really wanted to, as always, commend the festival for the hard work you do. It, it is such a draw to so many across uh, not just the state, but other states as well. I've spoken to some friends in California. They come up to see it. You know, of course, you know, Canadians come down. You know, I'm glad the borders are a little bit more porous. And, uh, but it's just such a wonderful thing. The art is just extraordinary. So thank you for all the work you do. Thank you. And we're hoping to get back to, uh, we have a map in our office asking where people live. And in a normal year, we cover about 85 countries around the world, all 50 United States. and. Uh, we'll be glad when we can get back to filling that up. Thank you. Very exciting. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Okay, we're on to item number four. This is public comment. This is time on our agenda where we invite members of the public to comment on anything that is not on the agenda. 
So any members of the public wishing to comment on something that's not on the agenda? Okay, we will move on to our consent agenda, item five. Mayor Miller. Mr. Young. Short of anyone um, pulling an item, I uh, move that we approve the consent agenda. Second. Have a motion by Mr. Young, a second by uh, Mr. Carter to approve consent agenda. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Okay, motion carries. All right, we're moving on to other business. Item 6A, access Anacortes fiber internet update. And it'll be interesting to see if uh, we gave Ms. Shu enough time to get set up. Mayor, Council, can All you right. my screen? No, my video Mayor. is not going, so just one second, no, sorry. Oh, All working. right, Miss Shu, okay. oh, you, over to you. Well, okay, can you can you hear me? Yep, we can hear you just okay, fine. Sorry, I don't know why my my video is not working. Let me go ahead and share my screen. Okay. Tonight, I'm pleased to pro, uh, provide the March 2022 Access Anacortes Fiber Internet Update. This will be a familiar slideshow because uh, we use a very similar template month to month to month. But I think that we have a lot of really good news tonight. And so I'm pleased to share that with you. Um, I have been uh, showing you a 13 month um, kind of rolling chart that um, indicates not only our GPON customers, but also our revenue. And so again, um, we've had a significant increase in the, the number of customers we were able to place into service between February and March. We now have, uh, as of the end of business today, 1,164 customers. And that is bringing in a monthly revenue of almost $76,000 a month. So we're very pleased with that, that trend and that it is continuing to, to grow um, significantly month to month. Another way that we measure our success is looking at uh, our penetration of the market. And so we made a significant um, increase in the number of orders during the, the month of, uh, over the last month since I last presented. We have actually 92 new orders that have been placed since we, we smoked last month. And that is really a testament to our city staff who are out, um, canvassing the, the neighborhoods where we now have service, and also canvassing the, the areas where um, people are not in service, but there is service available to them. In the West End, we have a quarter of our um, signups in service and have achieved a 35.4% take rate. So we're really pleased that's been a significant increase um, over the, the past month. And you can see that citywide, that we have over a 35% take rate, which is, which is great news. In the areas where we currently are in service, um, we are experiencing an even higher rate. So in our pilot area, we have a 43.7% take rate. So good news. The next area that I think it also is great news is that we've had two months where we've had a positive operating cash flow. Um, and that is a significant um, change and uh, improvement in, in the trend. And this actually includes some um, significant expenses that are annual contracts that, that we're paying. So uh, very pleased that this trend is consistent with our business plan that we had indicated that two to three years after establishing service that we would be um, cash flow positive. So we are we are there. I will admit that we squeaked by in February, but it, it is still a positive um, operating cash flow. In the West End, you can see the green um, in the, the West End. Those are the areas where we have uh, service available to customers. And this uh, is has much more green than it did last month, and that will continue. 
Um, installations are underway. As we indicated, we have about 25% of our orders in service in the West End, but we know that there's 600 additional customers that are waiting to be placed into service. Um, right now, we're making phone calls and letting people know that we would like to get them that have orders in, that we'd like to get them scheduled um, and on the calendar. We are booked out at three to four weeks right now. So if you have a phone call that has come in or an email, um, from Access Fiber Internet, I'd encourage you to, to go ahead and, and follow up on that call or that email so we can get you on the schedule, so we can get you in service as soon as possible. Uh, the trenching, the road work restoration, and the sidewalk panel restoration is all underway, and we're continuing to work on securing the easements on private streets. This is another look um, of our map that is available on our website. Um, it is updated on a regular basis as we're adding additional areas of service in the West End. This, uh, anything that is in green is currently in service. The purple area is Weymouth View. We are preparing to go out to bid. Um, we're preparing the materials to be able to go out to, to bid for those um, for the construction services. We're ordering the materials for that area. And we're continuing to do the work necessary to meet all of the EDA grant application requirements um, for the, the gray areas in our map. This um, is a, another way of looking at that, just to, but also including you know, some additional information about the, the funding sources. Um, the, the area, I think we're, you know, everybody's getting familiar with the, the, the titling of the West End, the EDA area in Weymouth View. Um, and just to providing just a bit of a, a status of where we are with that expansion time frame and how we're intending to, to pay for them, the projects. I do want to mention some community partnerships. Uh, when you go into the Anacortes Public Library, they have a giant screen in their foyer, um, and they really were our first customer. Uh, we provide high-speed internet at the, at the library. If you're interested in just testing it out on a Wi-Fi capacity, you're welcome to, to go there um, or to use a direct connect uh, to the internet through the, the public uh, access computers that are there. So I appreciate the, the partnership that they are showcasing that they are a customer of Access Anacortes Fiber Internet. We're also going to be working at um, uh, joining with the Anacortes Senior Activity Center. They have a presentation that they give on a regular basis about cutting the cord and staff from the fiber department will be um, joining them and helping to answer any questions on April 5th. If you're interested in signing up for that, it's as simple as going to the, the Anacorta Senior Activity Center website, and they have a link on their calendar to be able to put your name in um, to, to attend that. There's no cost associated with, with this class, and it's intended to be educational. We're continuing our work, um, and as I mentioned last month, that we have updated our website to include an interactive map. Uh, by simply typing in your address, you can provide, get uh, information uh, firsthand back about the, the status of your neighborhood or your particular uh, address about whether or not we're able to provide service or when the projected time is. Uh, the work that we're doing in Access Anacortes Fiber could not be done without the great support that we've had uh, from other departments at, at the city. And one example of that is uh, all of the work that we're um, doing with the, the legal department and the public works department, and the planning department, um, actually, in helping us to, to prepare documents and easements um, to be able to submit the, in, a dish, um, in advance to the EDA uh, before we can actually go out for a bid for materials and a construction contract. The legal department is working with us in, throughout the city. They really had no idea how many uh, private streets that we had um, until we went through this process and uh, getting to be uh, far, far more competent at reading easements than they have in the, the past. But really, we, we look to the legal department to be the, the source um, on how we should be going about that. And the finance department meets with us on a regular basis, as we discussed tonight at the beginning of the meeting, 
um, in addition to, to participating in the, uh, the finance director participating in our fiber council committees meetings, um, I'm also going to be attending some of the finance council committee meetings because we do know that uh, this, this project is an important essential infrastructure for our community, but it does uh, come with, with a cost and we wanna make sure we're all on the same page about how we're going to be funding um, and providing that. So, you know, I always like to, to end to, to let people know that we are your local uh, internet service provider. And it's as simple as talking to somebody here at, at City Hall who knows the, the streets that, uh, you know, can uh, understand your neighborhood and can give you very accurate information. We want this to be the easy decision for an Accordus residents. To, to know that there are no gimmicks and how we go about our plans. This slide, this slide uh, in particular has not changed since we first went into service and put our first customer in, in service in November of 2019. So the pricing is, is stable. It's not something that I change. It's something that the city council um, would be the only ones that would be able to, to make that change. And we really wanna make it the simple um, stable, fast internet service that is available to you as a city of Anacortes uh, resident or business. So feel free to, to reach out. We're happy to, to answer any questions that you that you have. With that, I'd be happy to take any questions. Thank you, Ms. Shu. Uh, great report and uh, really exciting. You know, we, I always talk about the milestones in this new business operation, the first dollar, first customer, and uh, per, thousandth customer and the big milestone uh, you know, cash flow positive. I know that's uh, really important and, and not a fluke uh, two months in a row. So uh, exciting stuff. Uh, but with that, I'll, uh, I'll stop talking and turn it over to uh, any member of the audience want to comment or questions. And then uh, council, questions, comments, from Ms. Shue? Mr. McDougal. I just had a, a quick comment. I wanted to, to thank the department for, <clears throat> excuse me, arranging the, um, the educational sessions on cutting the cord. When we were first sort of designing Access Anacortes, we made the kind of strategic decision to do internet only and not do sort of like a triple play bundle, like bundle voice and bundle video, you know, TV in with it. And the reason for that is just the trend of, you know, everything's kind of going over the top anyway with things like Skype you can get live TV channels from Hulu and YouTube. And so to be able to go internet only because of that trend and also because actually the technology to, to do the video and the, the voice systems would have added probably 30% to our costs. So, so thank you for doing those educational sessions as well because that'll help people to realize that they, they no longer need the sort of full service voice video um, data from like one of the incumbent providers. So thanks. You can set it up where it'll work like regular old TV. It'll feel the same. So I'm, I'm looking forward to that uh, cut the cord training. All right. Thank you. Uh, any, uh, thank you, Michelle. All right. Uh, moving on to item 6B, resolution 3076, conservation easement program contract. Discussion, possible action. Mr. Lunsford, you are up. Mayor Miller, council members, ladies and gentlemen, good evening. Okay, so a few months ago, we were here with you tonight, uh, here with you to talk about the conservation easement program. With me virtually are Michael Kirschenbaum from the Skagit Land Trust, Conrad Legal, the uh, consulting attorney with the Skagit Land Trust, and Ms. Darcy Swetnam, our city attorney. Just a quick overview, uh, the, e the conservation easement program began in 1998 with resolution, resolution 1492. It allowed for the protection of acreage in the forest lands, and since that time, nearly 1,700 acres have been protected. And in that program, for each $1,000 for each $1,000 donated, one acre of land was conserved. That's not me. I'm not sure what that is, but I'm sure it'll pass. 
Um, the money donated goes into the Forest Endowment Fund. That's a city fund, of which the uh, principal cannot be spent, but it generates interest, which can be spent for forest land stewardship. So we have a great public-private partnership with the Skagit Land Trust, the Friends of the Forest, uh, Friends of the ACFL, and the city. And in that relationship, the city owns the land, the Skagit Land Trust holds the easement, and the Friends of the ACFL help us promote the program and do forest lands education. So it's a great partnership. It's lasted for over 20 years. So the map here is a kind of a refresher. We have about 2,940 acres of forest lands. Um, this program has conserved about 1,700 acres, or 1,682. And um, if, we, if you choose to approve resolution uh, 3076 tonight, that will add uh, about 250 some acres to bring that total up. On the map, you can see there are five numerals, and those are the new pieces that we are adding to the Forest Lands Conservation Easement Program. They are part of the ACFL. They've come to us since 1998 in either purchases or trades or things of that nature. Number two, in the middle is the land that was the old um, public works land for the sewage department. And so the parks fund purchased that from that fund and would like to make it available for easement. So because it wasn't included in last, the last resolution, that's why we've included it here. So um, Mr. Kirschenbaum is on the line, as is Mr. Legal. And uh, what we're doing here tonight, in addition to adding land, is doing some slight changes to the language of the agreement. And so one of those is this commercial use provision. There's been many questions brought to us in Parks and Recreation over time. What is commercial? Originally, it was designed to be no logging, no mining, no commercial development, such as residential. But we wanted to kind of clarify that with this agreement. So as you can see here, if you choose to look at it, essentially it's talking about what you could do commercially, and that would be a de minimis recreational activities. So in the past, we've talked about things like stand-up paddleboard or kayak or things of that nature we've talked about in the community. If, we, if someone came to us wanting to do that or fill that niche, um, that is something that we could talk about. Um, and uh, I'll hand it over to Mr. Kirschenbaum. Michael, would you like to say anything else on that on behalf of the Land Trust? No, thank you, John. Um, and thank you, Mayor Miller and the City Council for considering this. And happy to answer any questions. I think John gave a great overview um, of the uh, history of the program and why we kind of come to this moment to um, uh, uh, kind of fix some old errors in the conservation easement amendment and the legal dis descriptions, but more importantly, add this amazing new 250 acres to this permanent protection. And then to um, update some of the language in the easement to make it more durable. Um, so that there aren't unintended consequences. It was clear that it was never the intent of the easement program to prohibit uh, paid birding walks or things like that. It's conversion of the land to commercial uses. That's the core meaning of the easement. So this was an opportunity to clarify that, which will really only strengthen it long-term. Thank you, Michael. And then the second minor change would be under forest land stewardship on page seven of your uh, document and that would allow us to um, remove vegetation um, and trees and do controlled burns if there was the need to do so based on the science. So right now we, we wouldn't be able to do that, but in talking to the land trust, we're not, we're not sure how the uh, change in summers or heat or climate is going to affect the forest lands or a bug infestation. So we want to have that flexibility in this document. It's not that, that we're going to do that. But this, if, the if the studies of the science allow that to happen, the city and the land trust were in mutual agreement, that could be something we would proceed with together. So we just want to have that uh, possibility in this to, if, 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 if ever the need would arise. So again, it's not something we are planning on doing or looking forward to do. It's just something we want to have in our back pocket if ever the case would arise. And this, so the public also understands, the ACFL also has a management plan or a plan that governs how we operate it and that's something that council reviews when we did it. We just passed one last year, and we'll bring one to you again, because I think that's what we've promised to do in the next couple of years. And so that is a management plan that looks at all the various facets of the, of the uh, uses in the city for us. And so that's something that you approved and the public has a chance to weigh in on through the first of force advisory board and under you. So there's many layers of protection, many layers for the public to comment on. This is just one. And as Mr. Kirschenbaum said, it's just a chance for us to update, 
to add new acreage and to make sure that we're adding that, that special layer of protection the Conservation Easement Program provides. So, uh, Michael or Conrad or Ms. Swetnam, if you have anything you'd like to offer, I'll stop talking. I think that was a great overview. Um, you know, John spoke to the partnership this has been between Friends of the Forest, Land Trust, um, city government, and most importantly, the citizens of Anacortes, you know, who back in the 90s decided that it wasn't enough just to have this land of public ownership. We had to make sure that no matter what, there was a backstop to ensure that this would never be converted, logged, mined, subdivided, and developed. And we're only here today because all those folks kind of got together and set up this amazing program through the city to add this layer of protection and stewardship funding to the program. So we're really happy to have worked with the city um, during these past couple of years to strengthen and, and expand the easement program. Thank you, Michael. Yeah, this, so this process took about three years. So we went through with a pretty fine tooth comb over and over, thanks to Ms. Swetnam's office, thanks to uh, Mr. Rob Hoxie in the GIS department. You know, we went through it quite slowly and deliberately to make sure we caught the pieces that were, there were some errors in the deeds and made sure we had the language just as we wanted it. So um, I, if you have any questions, I'm happy to do my best to answer them. Okay, uh, thank you. Uh, Mr. Lundford, Mr. Kirschenbaum, uh, we'll, before we go to council, I'll see if any members of the audience want to comment or have any questions. I have a couple online looking for hands. Okay, uh, Mr. Brian Wetcher, you're, you're on. Thank you, Mayor and council members. I would just like to thank staff uh, for the city and the land trust uh, and also the friends of the forest for their diligent work on this document. Uh, this brings the program into the 21st century and it brings us the opportunity to have this program continue forward in a meaningful way for the citizens of Anacortes. And I think people from the past that have helped to make this program possible maybe smiling down on us tonight and and uh, I certainly hope Gene Murphy is but uh, in invoking him I would say this is a legacy for the city of Anacortes for the future we are exemplary in having the kind of city forest lands that we do and I would compliment staff on their vision to see the necessity of updating this document and the staff of <clears throat> the land trust as well in helping us do this in such a meaningful way. I urge you to support this immediately and approve this language. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Wetcher. All right, any other, anybody here at City Hall want to comment on this one? Okay, Council. Mayor Miller. Mr. Walters. Uh, I would also like to thank staff and the land trust. Um, it's critically important that we get this revised while everybody's in agreement about what it is we're doing. Uh, we, it's much more difficult to deal with these types of uh, deed issues and errors if there's some current controversy. So the timing is right. Uh, I do have one question about the documents provided in the packet, the easement text and the baseline documentation still have a lot of uh, comments, word comments in them, um, maybe some to-do items. Is this, well, this is evidently not the final version of the document that we would be adopting. Is there another version ready or is there more work to be done? Mr. Walters, so is, uh, I can't see what you're looking at. I don't have that on the screen in front of me. Are you saying the track changes wasn't turned off? Uh, I don't see track changes, but I see a lot of comments okay. in the document. I, I, think the that, I think that what you're seeing is um, the near final. I can double check that and I can, if you would like, I can put that in your packet for consent next week if that's what you want to do, whatever, whatever makes sense to you. But I think that what, what we have is final and uh, we want to just make sure we're, you're looking at the same thing. But I think what you have is, is, is the final. We just have to clean up that comments on the side. Yeah, my, my sense is that would be great if, if we had the completely clean version um, on consent agenda. 
and I don't have any problems with the revisions to the language. Um, but because it is such a detail-oriented piece of work, it, it, it probably is worth making sure that we have the final, final version of the document. Certainly, that's a, that's a great point, and we can make sure that's, that's the way it is. Council, any other comments? Okay, um, I think with that, then we'll uh, plan on bringing that, make, making sure the uh, comments are all cleaned up and bring a clean copy for the consent agenda next week. All right, seeing uh, head nods on that, we'll move on to item 6C, Ordinance 4014, Amending Anacortes Municipal Code, Table 1941050, Principal Uses, in mixed use and industrial zones to eliminate self-service storage as a permitted use in commercial use zone. Discussion, possible action. Mr. Miesmer, you are on. Thank you, Mayor. Members of the council and the audience. I have just a brief presentation for you on this one. So again, self-service storage facilities in the commercial use zone are currently listed as a permitted use in table uh, 1941-050. And um, as council uh, recalls, um, council adopted a moratorium um, back in uh, February, I believe it was, to prohibit self-service storage facilities in the commercial zone while staff worked on bringing this ordinance before you. So what is self-service storage? Uh, the category includes facilities providing separate storage areas. Essentially, um, you or I could take our personal or business belongings in and put them in storage and pick them up at any time we want. Includes warehouse and self-service, fully enclosed indoor, multi-story storage, mini warehouse. And then there are some standards in the commercial use zone uh, that would require that they are fully enclosed and only accessible from indoors. So there are minimal design standards for those businesses right now. And this um, tells you that under Table 1942030, which is the form and intensity standards, that there is no maximum building size in the commercial use zone for a um, self-service storage facility. In other words, a 200,000 square foot building could be constructed as self-service storage. This depicts the self-service storage um, allowance being struck through on table 1941050, which is proposed by ordinance 4014. These are, are two maps, and I realize they're a little small, but it does show in green the commercial use zone there is a commercial use zone area out at Sharps Corner, and then the downtown area along Commercial Avenue um, from the roundabout down to um, 12th Street. And so th there are a few self-storage facilities that are currently in service. There are those out by March, or excuse me, Sharps Corner, and then a couple of them off of 28th Street. Those uh, businesses would be allowed to continue with what they're doing. They could be maintained, uh, but they would not be allowed to be enlarged based on uh, existing uh, uses. And that's it for that little PowerPoint presentation. Um, I would also like to mention that uh, we did bring this before the Planning Commission. Planning Commission heard it. Uh, we received two written comments, each in favor of eliminating self-service storage as a permitted use in a commercial use zone. The Planning Commission, after um, deliberating, uh, recommended approval to, to the City Council um, with a, a full vote from the Planning Commissioners. With that, if you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer those. Okay. Uh Thank you, and uh, thank you to the Planning Commission for uh, giving an opportunity for the public to weigh in on it and uh, providing that uh, recommendation to Council. So over to Council. Any comments, questions? Mayor Miller? Ms. Moulton. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Miesmer, for your work on this um, and appreciation to the Planning Commission also 
First of all, I can't believe we missed that. There was no maximum size on the cell storage <laughs> units. <laughs> um, so thank you for, for bringing this forward. And I think um, it has you uh, pretty much unanimous support, but I would like to let other council members weigh in before I make a motion. Mr. 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 Walters, then Mr. McDougall. Uh, I think like the previous item, the easement, it's, um, it, it, it's not controversial. It doesn't require a lot of discussion, but it's really important work. Um, and it's important that we get these things done. I do have one question about the mechanism here. Uh, we're striking from the use table, um, the use in the commercial zone, and also the footnote to 1945-050B. That section of the municipal code seems to only apply to the commercial zone. So do we also want to strike 1945-050B? Question for Mr. Miesmer. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Mr. Walters, yes, uh, we will include that in the ordinance. I, I, th I think that that would be um, best because otherwise it will add a little bit of ambiguity. And uh, it, it has no relevance, but it creates the question, uh, why does the use table not match otherwise? So just to put a motion on the floor, I don't, we don't need to cut off debate if there's more, but um, I would move that we approve the ordinance as presented with the addition of uh, deletion of AMC 1945-050 subsection B. Okay, and uh, Mr. McDougall, you can uh, discuss or second whatever your pleasure is. I would like to second, but also had a very quick question. Okay. Uh, Mr. Miesmer, would you mind scrolling back to the slide that has the table 1941? So just to clarify, self-service storage, there's two permitted places. There's the uh, commercial marine and then light, light manufacturing. So those really quickly, those parts of town are the basically sections kind of east of the commercial zone, correct? Correct. Okay. Yeah. So, so it would be permitted there? Correct. Light manufacturing, uh, South March Point Road, Reservation Road area, um, and then the commercial marine area, we already have some, of the, some larger ones in there as well. Okay, great. Thanks for the clarification. Yeah, and second. Okay, I have a motion by Mr. Walters and a second by Mr. McDougall to approve Ordinance 4010 with the uh, change to delete AMC 1945050.B. Uh, I think I got that correctly. Uh, Ms. Hunt, would you call for the vote, please? Mr. Young? Yes. Mr. Walters? Yes. Ms. Cleland McGrath? Yes. Ms. Moulton? Yes. Mr. McDougall? Yes. Ms. Hubick? Yes. Mr. Carter? Yes. Motion carries. All right, thank you very much, and uh, thanks for the work on that. I think we all knew when we worked on Title 19 that we wouldn't catch everything, so uh, this, is, this is a catch, and a good catch. Okay, on to item 6D, contract modification, uh, water quality assessment and planning project. Uh, over to you, Mr. Buckemeyer. Thank you, Mayor and Council and members of the audience. Um, just before we jump into this item, uh, I wanted to take a, a short opportunity to update the council that next Monday is going to be the Upland uh, contractor selection for the outfall project. As you recall, this selection is going to be based on expertise and cost you know, combination. And uh, just as a reminder, the packet materials that you're going to receive later this week are going to be woefully absent some of the detail that you normally see because we're going to open those uh, proposals on Wednesday, close the business, dive into them Thursday and Friday, and late Friday you'll get a recommendation from us as, a, as an email. And yeah, anyway, uh, I appreciate your accommodation on that. Just a reminder. It's a, it's a, it's a tight timeline to, yeah. to get that contract done. Yeah. Okay, so tonight, for your consideration, is a contract modification with Confluence Engineering LLC in the amount of $99,978. I've got 
Brian McDaniel here with me this evening, our water system manager. Um, this will allow us to continue their work on our water quality assessment project that we started last year. Uh, we've discussed this with both Mayor Miller and Public Works Committee, so for some of you this will be a review and, and some not. Um, this really began last year uh, when we had the opportunity to examine the interior of our existing um, uh, clear well. We built two of them so that we could, we could do that. And we noticed um, some discoloration inside the, inside the existing clear well. So with the help of Confluence Engineering, we've figured out what, what, it, what the discoloration was made of. It's totally inert materials that are basically a, originating as part of our treatment process. But now we need to figure out how to prevent this from happening again. And Confluence is going to help us do exactly that. So they're going to help us develop an improved systematic water main uh, cleaning, flushing plan. Um, that's not going to result in any interruption of service, just going to be a, probably a year or two long process. It's going to help us fine tune the filtration process at the water treatment plant. Um, that'll help us uh, prevent this from occurring again. And it's, they're going to also help us update some of the documents that are going to be used in our upcoming regional water system plan. So with that, questions? Okay, right to uh, council questions. Council, this is a contract modification. Mayor Miller? Mr. Walters. Um, are we, just out of curiosity, are we not doing the slide presentation? Um, we're, we weren't going to do that. It's included in the packet. If somebody wants to go through that, we can, but we weren't, we weren't planning on that. I don't, I'm not saying we need to. I was just yeah. asking. We already went through it in the Public Works Committee meeting. Exactly, so. yep. Mayor Miller? Mr. Young. Unless there's another council member um, with a different comment, um, I move that City Council authorize the Mayor to sign a modification to contract 21-184-WTR-001 with Confluence Engineering Group, LLC, in the amount of $99,978, increasing the total contract price to $144,960. Yeah, Mayor Gear. Oh, yeah. I did it again. You know, two you weeks know in a row. I'm sorry. Three, I'm sorry. You're going to start. Uh, okay, yes. Miss um, Cleveland One of these days, I'll get it. You can call me whatever you want. Um, uh, I just want to say, uh, for folks at home who weren't able to wa read the report, I just think it's really good to reiterate that it's inert material that's causing the discoloration. It is very, it's safe, but we also don't want to see any color in our water, and we've heard some feedback that it's happening more than we would like it to. Um, so this is really wonderful that we're going to kind of figure out what the, why that's occurring and have a plan so it occurs less frequently. Um, and with that, I would say uh, I second. Thank okay. Thank you. I have a motion by Mr. Young and a second by Ms. Cleland McGrath to authorize uh, the contract modification with water quality assessment and planning project. Ms. Hunt, would you call for the vote, please? Unless there's any further discussion. Okay. Ms. Hunt. Mr. Walters. Yes. Ms. Cleland McGrath. Yes. Ms. Moulton? Yes. Mr. McDougal? Yes. Ms. Hubick? Yes. Mr. Carter? Yes. Mr. Young? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. And there being no further business, I will adjourn the City Council meeting of March 14th. Thank you very much.